This five-star quarterback was supposed to be the next big thing when he committed to USC out of high school in 2017. As a young player in college, it almost seemed certain that he would find his way to the NFL and have success as a starter. But due to some unfortunate situations and bad luck, this never came true. When I say the name JT Daniels, it may provoke a lot of thoughts in your head. The guy who got injured a lot, the guy who played at four schools, or maybe the guy that fell off. On December 1st, 2023, JT Daniels medically retired from football before he could fulfill his ultimate dream of playing on Sundays. To fully understand Daniels, we must go back in time and take a look at his entire story. Go in the comments right now and let me know how you feel about the JT Daniels situation. If you're new, make sure to subscribe so you never miss out on another upload like this. Join the best family in college football. All right, let's go. JT Daniels was born in Irvine, California, which is the perfect spot to be for an aspiring football player because you can attend the legendary modern day high school, which is a breeding ground for college and pro level talent just 20 minutes away from your house. And that's exactly what he did. In 2015, he became the starter as only a freshman, which is not a common occurrence at that school. In his sophomore year, he got the keys to the offense as the full-time play caller and started putting up ridiculous numbers. He threw for just shy of 5,000 yards and 67 touchdowns, and he followed that up junior year by leading his team to a 15-0 season and a national championship. His trophy case got even more stacked after winning the Gatorade Football Player of the Year, the Max Preps Player of the Year, and the Male Athlete of the Year Award. JT decided decided to forego his senior year in high school and reclassified to the 2018 class. Many people thought this was a great decision as his game was ready for the next level. He was ranked number two as a pro style quarterback in the country and number six overall coming in at five stars. His final four schools were Washington, Michigan, Stanford, and USC. He ultimately decided to stay close to home and commit to USC under head coach Clay Helton. Would he become the next great in USC's long history of quarterbacks? When Daniels arrived on campus, he would have to fight for his spot as a starter. USC was just coming off a great 2017 season with an 11-3 record led by quarterback Sam Darnold, who had just departed for the NFL. It was either going to be Matt Fink, Jack Sears, or JT Daniels who filled the shoes. Daniels showed enough in camp to win the job, becoming the second ever true freshman in school history to start a season opener. USC started the season ranked at number 15 in the AP poll, but they would get dropped out in week three only to never return to the rankings after losing back-to-back -back games to Stanford and Texas. USC had a disappointing year finishing 5-7, and seven, but a bright spot was a developing young quarterback. Daniels passed for over 2,600 yards, 14 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions in 11 games. He showed flashes of his potential with his arm, and USC fans were sure that there was more to come in the future. 2019 was going to be the breakout year for Daniels, but a tragic injury derailed it all. During the season opener against Fresno State, Daniels was sacked in the second quarter. He was slow to get up, and fans all around the country were worried as he exited the game. JT Daniels had torn his ACL and was ruled out for the season. To fill in, Helton would name freshman Keaton Slovis as the new starter, and it didn't take long to see that Slovis was him. The next week against a ranked Stanford team, he threw for 377 yards and three touchdowns, breaking a school record for most yards by a true freshman in his USC debut. USC went eight and five on the year, which is not up to their program standards, but Slovis impressed. He set many school records for passing, and when it was all said and done, he had a 71.9 completion percentage with 3,500 yards through the air, 30 touchdowns to only nine interceptions. USC had found their future quarterback, and JT Daniels knew this. On April 16, 2020, it was announced that Daniels would enter his name into the transfer portal. He wasn't in the portal for long, as Georgia snatched him up just weeks later. This would be a great spot for Daniels with a team that's proven to compete for national championships, plus a plethora of weapons he had surrounding him. The quarterback room was loaded that year in Athens, so it left people wondering if he would even get the starting job. Originally, JT was unable to play because he wasn't cleared by his personal doctor, and his first opportunity to see the field for the Bulldogs was November 21, 2020, against a Mississippi State team. He went off. 400 yards passing with four touchdowns, reminding the world who he was. To finish the season, Daniels went 4-0 as a starter, including a Peach Bowl win against a surging Cincinnati team. His numbers were fantastic. 62.2 completion percentage with 10 touchdowns and two interceptions. 2021 looked like the year that JT Daniels was going to lead the Georgia Bulldogs back to the promised land with a national championship. He was in a favorable system with all the talent in the world, great support from the fans, and he was finally going to be healthy. This is what we all thought was going to happen. JT won the starting job over junior Stetson Bennett coming out of camp, but the margin between these two was very small, as we would soon come to realize. Bennett appeared in eight games the season prior. After game one of the season against number three Clemson, where he threw for 128 yards and no touchdowns, Daniels went down with an oblique injury and would miss the following week. Bennett took over versus UAB and scored five touchdowns, tying a school record. At this point, we knew that there was going to be a quarterback battle in Athens. Daniels returned to the field in week three against South Carolina and went 23-31 with 303 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Week four would be his last start, more injury problems ensued, and he was replaced by Bennett that game. The rest is history. 
Stenson Bennett made the most of his opportunities and was the right fit for the Bulldogs. It's nothing to do with what Daniels did or didn't do. That's a quote from offensive coordinator Todd Munkin on why they made the decision they did. Bennett went on to lead Georgia to their first national title since 1980. Daniels went 7-0 at Georgia, but his future was still uncertain. Looking forward to 2022, JT Daniels was in a similar situation to where he was at USC. After battling injuries, he had lost his starting spot yet again. So we decided to hit the transfer portal for the second time. And this time it actually hits close to home for me personally. Daniels had three schools as his top targets. Missouri, West Virginia, and Oregon State. During the spring of 2022, I was in my freshman year at Oregon State University and I remember the buzz around JT coming to Corvallis. I thought it would be amazing. An experienced, pro-style quarterback in Jonathan Smith's offense. I thought this was the missing piece to the Beavs' Pac-12 championship run. Unfortunately, this didn't work out and Daniels committed to West Virginia. His college career had taken him all the way across the country at this point. To put it in the words of a West Virginia blog, the JT Daniels experiment did not go as planned for both parties involved. This wasn't a team that had sky-high national championship hopes like Georgia, but a bolster season was a victory for their level of talent. They were expected to be 8th in the Big 12 according to a preseason media poll. Yet again in 2022, Daniels didn't play a full season. The Mountaineers lost their first two games of the season against Pittsburgh and Kansas in heartbreaking fashion. Daniels didn't look great in the opener going 23 of 40 with two touchdowns and a pick. In game two, he bounced back against Kansas though, throwing for 365 yards and three touchdowns. Unfortunately, as the season went on, his performances were declining and he was benched after week 10 where West Virginia had a three and six record. He finished the year with a career low completion percentage of 61.2 with 13 touchdowns and nine picks, which is bad. This was would be the end of the road in Morgantown for JT Daniels, but due to injuries in the COVID year, he would be granted a sixth and final year of college eligibility, and he decided to hit the portal for the third time. He committed to play for the Rice Owls under head coach Mike Bloomgren for the 2023 season. This was a pivotal season for Rice as they were making the jump from Conference USA to the American. Could they have found themselves a forgotten gem in college football? Forget everything that led him to this point, this was Daniel's last chance to prove that he could play in the NFL. If he had a year good enough to get drafted, everyone would forget about the last five years of misfortune. The highlight from the 2023 season was in week two where Rice upset Houston, led by Daniels showing out with 401 yards and three touchdowns. He backed that up the next week by throwing four tutties against Texas Southern. Through the first nine games, Daniels was having a career year with 21 touchdowns and over 2,400 passing yards. He was seriously going to be looked at for an opportunity to play at the next level, but November 4th, 2023 would be the last time he ever touched the field as a football player. In the game against SMU that day, he had suffered a career-ending concussion. After examination, his doctors confirmed that it would be in his best interest to never step on the football field again. JT Daniels officially announced his medical retirement on December 1st, 2023. It's a truly unfortunate story of a player that had so much potential in the sport. In his college career, Daniels was never able to find a good fit in the program. He was either derailed with injuries like at USC and Rice, got unlucky which happened at Georgia, or simply didn't fit with the system in the West Virginia example. Either way, in a universe where Daniels wasn't plagued by misfortune, I have no doubt in my mind he would have been a successful quarterback in both college and the NFL. I'll end this video with a quote from JT. I've loved every stop that I've been at and I've loved everywhere I've been. I wouldn't have changed any of it. Thank you so much for watching. I had a blast making that video. I've always been fascinated with JT Daniels and his story. I really thought he was going to be a franchise type quarterback at USC and go on to the NFL. I've been Saturday Shenanigans, your home for unfiltered college football content. Make sure to subscribe if you're new so you never miss out on uploads like these. And I'll see you guys in the next one.